Currently, my game has some quite awful particle effects. Well, it really only has one particle effect, the muzzle flash, which is pretty awful. And the Unity particle system is like apparently really powerful. It's using Unity's particle system. You should try and make a game using only particles. They're in Unity, using particle systems and sprites made with GIMP. So I think it's about time I educated myself on Unity's particle system and began my journey to Particle Master. Though particle effects are the main focus of this devlog, they aren't the only thing I'm working on. The main thing I'm focusing on right now is game feel. I'm just trying to make sure that the core gameplay of my game is solid before I continue moving forward. Essentially, I'll be working on some things like bounce, making the gunplay feel solid, and getting the movement and stage design to coexist peacefully. And I'm also going to take a few more steps to get closer to the ultimate goal of releasing a demo somewhat soon. In the last devlog, I added some new sounds and animations to the guns but they still feel kind of empty, so I'm gonna add a lot of juice. Juice is just another way to say game feel, like making something feel satisfying. Juice is a way to give your player positive feedback for doing something, like hitting the enemy. So for now, I'm just gonna add a hit marker and a hit marker sound effect for hitting the other player. I started off by making the sound effect. I navigated to a website called Free Sound and just looked up Ding Sound. Yes, that's why I searched Ding. I spent a few minutes listening to various dinging noises. No. No. Nope. Before eventually finding the one I liked. Then I imported it into Unity and messed around a few effects to make it sound better. Finally, I put it into Unity and made the bullet call a method on the shooting script that plays the sound. I'm not the biggest fan of the sound itself, but it'll work for now. Adding the hit marker was also pretty simple. I added a canvas element that is hidden most of the time, but appears for just a few frames whenever you hit an enemy. A cool thing I've noticed in other FPS games is the gun kind of sways around a bit. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna be following this very slow, but still pretty good tutorial that I'll be linking in the description. And here it is. I also made the guns into prefab variants, so I can edit like a base gun, and I'll add things like weapon sway to all the guns without me having to go into all the different prefabs separately. This will be useful for whatever I have tons of guns and want to just change one simple thing about all of them. So it is time to begin my particle training. I started off by watching Bracky's all around tutorial on Unity's particle system and now I think I have a bit more experience and can hopefully make some decent particles. I'm going to now redo the muzzle flash effect. It's kind of strange looking back that this muzzle flash particle effect which was very simple is actually the most difficult to make out of any of the particles. And now it's time for the second particle assignment, a bullet casing effect. Most games have it, I want it, let's make it. So my first attempt at making it looks like this, which is pretty awful but I tried again and got this much better looking result. I later sped it up a bit more. Finally, I decided to add a bit of a bullet spark effect on hitting walls. I designed the particles after a YouTube tutorial on making sparks and eventually got this result, which I am pretty satisfied with. I tried to add it and then realized that the particles were in the middle of the object they were colliding with. This is because a while ago I sort of cheated by making the colliders of the bullets go really far back. And this is now causing me issues, yay. So I finally set up a system for proper bullet collision detection. Now instead of just using a box collider, each frame, the bullets draw a ray cast between where it was and where it is last frame. The bullet draws a line cast between where it is now and where it was last frame. If that line cast, yes it's a line cast, not a ray cast, hits anything, then it calls an event that destroys the bullets and creates particles, or damages the player. This also completely eliminated the need for bullets to have a collider at all, they just use Raidcast, and that should be a good thing for performance. Maybe. Personally, I think after some playtesting, that the stages I've created for this game just don't really work with the movement system. They are far too small, and especially the first and second stages, there just really isn't much room to move around, especially if there's going to be four players. So I'm just going to experiment with some new stage designs and try to get one where you can move around more freely and not fall off as easily. So I just put together some ideas and already this is much more fun. You can actually use the movement system. Plus the stage is probably better suited to 4 players. As you can see I also changed up some of the lightings and colors of the stages. I'm not sure if I like the new look so I'm going to keep experimenting. The level design is very bare bones right now. It's basically just some boxes with some pretty bad low poly trees on them. Though I didn't really change that this devlog, I'm going to eventually redo most of the forest models and make some things, like rocks, grass, flowers, better lighting, and just make the whole stage look a bit more alive like an actual forest. Though I kind of like the blocky aesthetic of the stage, so I might keep that. 
I decided that I wanted to add a ragdolling feature to the game, because ragdolls are good. I made a bunch of ragdolls in the last video, which you should watch if you haven't yet, and I very easily made a ragdoll out of the player's model, and then made the player spawn well whenever it dies and also hide itself. Then I made the player spawn well whenever it dies and also hide itself. It's not perfect, the ragdoll is not in the same pose as a player, but that can be fixed eventually, this is fine for now. The final weapon that I'm going to be adding to the game for this demo is the shotgun. I already have a model for this gun, so I just need to rig it and make some animations. I think that this gun has a pretty good feeling of power and shooting animation. It's got quite a bit of kick. The reload animation is different from the other ones because it has an inter-reload state, a state that it repeats for the reloading, one for each bullet that it needs to reload, and then an exit reload state. I should hopefully be able to implement this all fairly smoothly. Okay, so now I have the shotgun in. I added a few changes to the gun script in order to add the ability to shoot multiple bullets at one time, and then get all the animations in. There are still a few issues, the reload doesn't loop the correct amount of times, and the spin pickup looks kinda janky. I touched up several animations, the spinning one is now smoother, the shooting one is more powerful, and the reload has just a bit more punch as well. I added to the shooting script, and now the gun repeats the reload animation once for each bullet it needs to reload, but the shotgun is now a more or less fully implemented and polished weapon. Yes, the time has finally come, and I will finally be tackling the quite daunting task of making the game for players. But why is that daunting, you may wonder? Well, for starters, the laundry list of stuff I have to do is longer than Queen Elizabeth's list of deceased pets. I first have to rework the input yet again in order to make the game work with more than one controller. Then I have to find a way to have multiple split screen settings that way you can switch between 2, 3, and 4 players. Then I need to make a player drop in and out system that allows players to join at the beginning of the game, and I need to add aim assist for the controllers. But you gotta start somewhere, and I started with reworking the input to work with multiple controllers. I have actually tried to do this last week, but that didn't work out, so I'm gonna try again. I looked around online to try to figure out how to use multiple gamepads with the new input system, but I couldn't find any answers. And honestly, I've just had lots of issues with this new input system, it doesn't really seem to be worth all the extra work I'm doing. So I decided to just go back to the old input system, because it's so much simpler and actually works with multiple gamepads. I kinda wish I made this decision a long time ago, cause it would have saved me a lot of time. I came back and reworked my input system for like the 20th time, and now the game is back to working with the old input system. And now my game is back to working with the old input system. So, we're basically back to the first devlog. Now I can get to adding multiple controller inputs, but to do all that I need to set up 74 axes and buttons in the input settings. I can see why they made a new input system. This is gonna take a while. So I finished setting up all that garbage, and now I can hopefully add controller input for up to 4 players. Anyways, I also ran into an issue with the trigger. For some reason, the right trigger, which is like the big button on the back of the joystick, doesn't work, and it only works whenever I set the settings to get motions from all joysticks. Now of course this doesn't work because I need to get motion from just one joystick, the one you're using. I have no idea why it's not working, and I looked all around, but I couldn't find any solutions to my issue. I even restarted Unity, and that didn't do anything, so for now, I just moved the shooting binding to the right button. Here is the third player. I disabled the UI for now because I need to rework some of it, but for the first time in this game's history, there is now sort of more than two players. And now there's four. I don't technically have three controllers, I will lost a cable to one of them, but I can switch the fourth player's controls to keyboard controls and move them around that way, to show that it's actually working. After fixing some issues with the guns and player death and crap, I finished up by adding the UI back, but scaling it and moving it to the right size. No idea to add split screen settings, drop in, drop out, and a few other things. The important thing is the four players sort of works now. The last things I did were polishing some things, messing up some of my particle effects to make them look better, bug fixing, and trying to implement aim assist which didn't work at all anyways thanks for watching anyways thanks for watching subscribe like comment give me your first burn child bye